So it is a pretty miserable day here in Auckland and it's a pretty miserable bit of news that's kind of come out in the last 24 hours that Tulupe Falatau is injured and has been ruled out of playing at the Rugby World Cup 2019. So pretty <clears throat> frustrating, disappointing news. You really feel sorry for that guy. He has had no luck with injuries in recent years, man. He has had a lot of time on the sidelines. And uh, yeah, it's really, really disappointing that this once in kind of four-year shot, especially for a guy who's 28, potentially at the peak of his powers, um, yeah, can't make the World Cup because he's broken his collarbone in training. Apparently it was pretty innocuous, but he broke his collarbone so it's going to require surgery so he is out of the rugby world cup um there's a few a few things that it mentions in the article i've read there's multiple news sources reporting on it uh you know he's broken his arm twice um he's not played a test match since march of 2018 which is quite some time I remember i did a video i think in january this year about how he was going to be in or out of the six nations this year and that was equally disappointing this is probably even more so given that it's a world cup um, so I guess how does this affect Wales's chances? I suppose it's kind of a testament to the work that Warren Gatland has been doing that he does have other guys who can step up. Uh, he's really worked that squad in the last four years to make sure a lot of guys have been getting uh, international game time. He's rotated the squad and he's maintained a pretty successful run while doing it. So they didn't have Falatau, um, you know, during the, the Grand Slam win this year. So I guess that's a testament to what he's been doing. Uh, the fact that they can still get success uh, without uh, without the man. Although it's still very, very disappointing to, to see a guy of that caliber who is not going to be at the World Cup. So I'm sure Wales fans are pretty, pretty disappointed and frustrated with that. Uh, the man himself uh, must be pretty heartbroken because, you know, there's only so many chances that elite players get to play at a World Cup. And this one has been taken from him. Uh, he's definitely not the only guy to kind of lose that opportunity to walk up uh, due to injuries. Um, I had a quick look and some of them off the top of my head. Uh, obviously, the one here in New Zealand that everyone's concerned about is Damian McKenzie. He is out uh, for the Rugby World Cup, so it kind of limits that ability for them to utilize him as that dual playmaker with Bowden Barrett, that 10-15 combo. So they're doing things with Richie Moonga and Barrett at the moment to kind of replicate that. It's something Hansen has been building uh, you know, in recent years to try and implement that World Cup time, I guess. But that's kind of gone out the window with him being injured. Uh, for Ireland, you know, Sean O'Brien and Dan Levy, pretty big guys to be missing. But again, uh, they're another squad who, who does have a lot of depth to kind of fill in in those positions. Um, Dylan Hartley, I suppose, is one for England. I'm not sure whether he's... I mean, he's been omitted from their, their you know, recent training camps, so... He has been injured for quite some time. I'm not sure whether he's still injured and unable to to participate or just kind of not pick because he had any, hasn't had any game time. Uh, some of you guys in England will probably have a shed a bit of light on that. Um, there's a few guys who are well, either doubtful or who have had injuries and are now kind of cleared. So the ones I'm thinking of are uh, you know, Johnny Sexton had a knock a while back, but that was a pretty minor one and he potentially just needs a bit of time off to rest. I think it was his thumb. Uh, that he was a finger he caught a ball uh, in practice and it bent the wrong way or something so he's going to be all good but still a bit of an injury scare if you're an Irish fan uh, Jan Surfontaine for the Springboks is a guy that I think a lot of people would like to see in that Springbok midfield because I don't think any of us are sure how that midfield combo is going to line up is it going to be Creel is it going to be Arm is it going to be Dale Ende um, yeah how's it going to go I feel like I'm missing one Who's the other one? Esther Hazen. Yeah, so there's, there's there's lots of options, but none of them quite seem the perfect combo at the moment. So it'd be nice to have Jan Serfontaine in the picture, but he's still recovering from injury. It seems kind of unlikely that he gets a Springbok call-up, but maybe if he makes a miraculous recovery. Uh, Brody Retallick, again, another All Blacks name. He dislocated his shoulder in the last game against the Springboks. Apparently the prognosis for him is better than expected, so they are still confident that he's going to... Uh, make a recovery in time for the World Cup. I suppose he's the kind of player that if he's still not 100% at the start of the World Cup, they potentially still take him and hope that he comes right for the latter pool stages or even directly into the knockouts because he is world class. Um, 
I believe Devin Toner is fit. He had a bit of an injury scare. I think he kept him out of the, the Pro 14 final from memory. Uh, Sam Kane is fit. He had a no, broken neck, man. Um, and he's fit much sooner than expected. So he's already been playing Super Rugby. And, um, you know, he's going to be involved in more rugby pretty much good as gold at the moment. Uh, Del Gui from, from Argentina, the, the winger. He's been out for an extended period. He was still named in there. Uh, initial squad so i'm not sure if he's been playing for the pumas 15 or not but he's another guy who's kind of under that injury cloud as well um big names in, in david pocock and sia khaleesi very very famous world-class top-notch loose forwards pocock would be a massive loss if australia don't get him back uh, but he's, again, still recovering from an injury. He's had another bad run. Some of these guys just seem to get really bad runs of injury. Uh, Khaleesi seems to be doing okay, but they're not risking him. They're not pushing him back to, to match time anytime soon. They're going to let him play a little bit of Curry Cup and just kind of ease him back into things with one eye on the World Cup. So, um, yeah, there's certainly been a few injury scares. You definitely want all the best players at the World Cup. I think pretty much all fans could agree on that. You want to see the best players... Uh, playing at the the pinnacle of, of of rugby, so we want to see them, no matter what country they're playing for. Uh, the fact that Falatau is out is very disappointing. As I said, the heart goes out to the big man because uh, he would have been relishing this chance to get back into action, and it has been taken from him. So very unlucky. Feel very sorry for him. But as I said, um, I think Wales fans should be pretty. Well, guys, take solace in the fact that um, they have been building a pretty good squad, and uh, there is depth in there. I mean, Moriarty's. One of my favorite players as well, so maybe that means a bit more game time for him. I guess we will see. Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts um, on Falatau. How disappointed are you in that? And that is far from an exhaustive list of players who are out injured. Those are just the ones that I could briefly find in a quick search. And uh, the ones that I know are kind of doubtful or, or out. But uh, other guys who you know are injured from their squads, uh, do comment on them as well because... Um, yeah, I'm curious just to see how many guys out there are kind of in that doubtful, ruled out uh, bracket. But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.